What is going on guys? Welcome to a bit of a normal progress video. I haven't actually done this on my account for a very long time, but it is actually just to tie over the time between me doing a massive grind on the Undrop Raid series for episode number 20, which is of course a pet episode. Now I might post these videos now and then, it's basically just going to be normal progress videos on me getting things done that I actually need for the Undrop Raid series, skills, quests or whatever I need to do. So let's get into it in the beginning. I am going to start on the quest grind and do a couple of things that I've actually required to, to do some cruise scrolls that I had to drop in the previous episodes. So let's get into it. Oh my god, look at this feature. You can actually just click right here, view missing items for quest helper because I'm tracking the Prince Ali rescue on GE. It just shows all the items that you do not have yet. Amulet of Eternal Glory. Yeah, no, I'm not spending 60 million on teleports. I'm good. And here we go, this is the first quest in the chain completed, 3 quest points, 700 coins, Prince Ali Rescue with 249 quest points. Since the creation of this account, how long did it take me to complete Prince Ali Rescue? The answer is 5,543 days. So I'm working on contact pretty much at the end of it now and I'm killing this giant scarab which is actually really tanky. I mean I'm maxed out with a whip and I still take a long time to kill it. But it's spawning these mobs that I've basically never even heard of. Locust Rider and Scarab Mage. I mean it makes sense when I haven't uh, done Prince Ali Rescue for like 10 years or something. But this item right here that the boss drops carries is really good versus the Calphite Queen. It has more damage versus Calphites and also after the Beneath Cursed Sands quest, I think you get an upgraded version of this, which actually can hit like 190 or something on Calphites. Of course, very rare because there is like a chance that it uh, four times your damage or something like that. So we will uh, have a look at that later. I think actually that's another Slayer block on 250, so that is a very nice additional reward from that on 7k Thieving. And uh, what do I put this on? Another Wish? I don't know. Magic? Yeah, I don't really care. It's 7k. Multiple times. Oh my god. Let's do Strength as well. Oh my god. Look at this as well. You can click here and it literally shows you all the items you need for every single part of the quest separated up. That is pretty damn overpowered and nice. But now it is time for the big quest Beneath Curse Sands, which unlocks Raids 3, which is coming out in like 2-3 weeks from now, so I will be ready for that in the future, which is very nice. And also, this NPC was not here before completing Contact, and that is why I could not get into this area, which was an Elite Clue Scroll, if I remember correctly, the Necropolis. So I will be able to do that after this. I do believe we're coming up on the first boss fight of the quest. The quest overall, by the way, just by looking at Runelight's information, doesn't seem that bad. I thought it would be like on the same level as maybe Dragon Slayer 2, but that does not at all seem to be the case. But let's see the first fight. I did see some info about it. Like you can't use protection prayers because if you do, he's going to slap you for like a third of your HP. So I guess we're just going to be using piety. Justy, just tank it out, let's have a look at this. You can see on the left side, it says do not use any overhead protection prayers or you will get hit for one third of your hit points, so... Okay, this is ridiculously easy, just piety, justy... Yeah, it's pretty good to have 99 defense in this gear, I have to say. I do believe this is going to be a bit of a more challenging boss, you have to actually range this one and it says you have to stay far away from it. And uh, also you have to kill some minions that spawn, you can see on the left side it says keep 4 tiles and kill swarms and like shadows when they appear, so I guess 600 HP and I can just run with the Bofa all the time and I should be fine I suppose. Let's go and check out the mechanics. Okay, I think this is the first one, yes, that is why you want to stay very far away from it, but yeah, that's not too bad. And there is the swarm spawning as well. It seems to be leaving fire after it, so that's probably why you want to kill it right away. Yes, that's how it works. And there is the shadow on the ground. I don't know if it does anything, but I might as well attack it, because there is an attack option obviously for it. And the boss is actually nearly dead, so yeah, not too bad of a boss. Just run, hit it with the uh, ranged weapon you have, and kill the minions that spawn. Last hit, there we go, that is the second boss completed of this quest. And here we finally have the last boss of the quest, Menefit Ak, and I think overall I've only spent like 20 minutes doing this quest. So yeah, really not that bad at all, and uh, I assume that this is going to be the hardest one, I do read the info on the left side. And there is the shadow, you do have to kill this, I think it just passively attacks you now and then. And the, the boss is supposed to also do a mechanic where you have to walk behind it. Maybe that's that one. Oh my. Did you see that animation? That was so weird. 
that looked even bugged. Uh, but I think that's pretty much the entire fight. It just says protect from melee or maybe, yeah, I think it's protect from melee and then just kill the shadow and then walk behind it when it does that really strange animation. That's one. All right, there we go. If I manage to get a hit in, there is also the last boss completed. And now I think that is pretty much the end of the quest. Probably some cutscenes, but uh, I should be done with the quest after this. And there we go. That should be it for the cinematic as well. It was a very short one, actually. And uh, that is the end of the quest. I'm going to be getting my circlet of water and my carries partisan and 20,000 agility experience. 252 overall quest points and also I have the soundtrack the pharaoh now which I actually needed for an elite clue scroll so that is very nice and uh, you charge this with water runes very nice uh, so I think that's just for the desert heat so you don't really have to care about it and uh, yes that is the Karis partisan which is a very very strong weapon versus the calphite queen. Now to another grind I want to get done, and that is a hunter grind. It's going to be a while because I have to go all the way from 70 to 77 or maybe all the way to 80 because what I want to do is I want to be able to catch crystal implings for a future on drop rate video. We catch 128 of them, I think it is, for Elven Signet. And uh, I'm going to be doing it through my maniacal monkeys. And uh, this is actually a very AFK method of doing it, and I really like AFK methods. It's not the fastest in the game by any stretch of the imagination, but it is pretty decent. It's like 60 to 100k an hour, I think, depending on your level. I think with my level I should get like 70 to 80k an hour, which is not that bad. And how you do it is you basically bring these bananas and you'd mount this uh, demonic gorilla. You click on this one and you can actually, I believe, only have one trap up, up at a time. I might as well try it if you can actually have more of them, but I think every guide that I watch for this says you can only do one. Yeah, you can only do one. And then you just wait here uh, for one of the monkeys to get caught. You click on the boulder and you get a thousand experience. So you get a lot of experience and there's bones around the area. You pick them up and you use the tablets to make the bones into bananas. So you can stay here for as long as you want to. I was already like halfway through the first level, but uh, here we go, 71 Hunter, the first level of the grind, and it is very handy that they give exactly a thousand experience per one, because then I know exactly how many I need to catch for the next level, and in this case, from 71 to 72, I will need to catch 85 of them, so it's not that bad. 72 Hunter? A 73 Hunter? 74 Hunter? Nice and even number coming up, 75 Hunter, 76 Hunter, really getting up in the levels there. Instead of going all the way to 80, I think I'm just going to go for 77, and this is the last one, 701,000 overall Hunter experience, and this did take quite a while, I pretty much fully afk this, or semi afk this for one and a half days, but it's nice to have it done, and now I can use the Hunter potions to easily boost all the way to 80 for Crystal Implings. Now there is another skilling grind I do want to do and that is actually a pretty short one. I'm 84 thieving right now and I need to get to 85 because that allows me to pickpocket the elves and there is the crystal teleport seed that you can get from those and I do want to do a drop rate video for that in the future. So I'm just going to start off by doing some Knights of Ardoin. Not sure how long I'm going to be doing it for but uh, I might do the entire level if it's AFK enough. So, you know, it's been like one and a half hour. You can see the experience I've gained, 138,000. So it's not that bad. It's like 90k an hour or something like that at my level. But I do want to do something a bit more engaging than just clicking on this guy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the last experience on uh, the Pyramid Plunder minigame, which is definitely a lot more fun. And we could also get lucky and get the Pharaoh Scepter. I should have been doing this the entire time. I was getting like 150k experience an hour compared to the RD Knights at like 90 to 100k. Maybe I was uh, kind of slacking a bit too much on the Knights though, but this is way less click intensive as well. So here we are going to finish off the 85 thieving. If I actually can loot this, there we go. 85 thieving, nice pop up right there. And you can now pickpocket elves, so that is done. But also in the future, I do want to go all the way to 91 thieving. So I will come back here in the future because I do want to farm for the Pharaoh Scepter sometime. And if we go to other, all the way down here, the last one is 91. And I do want to be able to loot all of the golden chests for that challenge. So sometime in the future, I will come back here and I will probably do all the way 85 to 91 on this minigame. 
Now, before we end the video, I do want to give a quick shout out to the clan. If you do want to join that, you can just apply on world 465. You can also just guest in the clan and ask for an invite and I will try to invite you. Or if Lucy Loud, my mod is online, she can also invite you. You can also join the Discord linked below and contact me that way if you do wish to join. But that is going to do it for this video. I do hope you guys enjoyed it and I will see you guys in a couple of days probably for the episode number 20 for the pet drop rate video. It's going to be a good one so I hope to see you there and of course subscribe to the channel if you want to be notified when that video is posted but until next time guys take care.